So, Flipside versus Weed... No, not Weed and Girls. Flipside versus Muck at EU. Who are we going to jump on board with first off? I'm going to jump on board with Mike of Rules because he does rule he does. pretty hard. Everybody rocking that tag. But this boy is sitting back showing some patience. I can't of course, there's this slight up. bit of delay this time or um, elastic banding with the with the uh, US East casters observing an EU game. It's not so bad though. Oh, it's a very bad play by Mike. He should definitely get this. Oh, did Mike trip on the post or something? It looked like Mike might have fallen off the post right there. Either way, there was no reason to, to kind of rush into the net. Um, because he just takes it, he makes it so much harder for himself to get up in time to meet that ball by going up so quick. Hmm. I wouldn't even say that. Mystic just with a poor clear. Going up on the wall here. Needed to get that further out. That, that clear is bad, but where on earth is... Where are Pashi and Siki? What? Hold on. Let's, let's watch for... Let's watch for Pashi and Siki. It's sometimes difficult to see where people are because of the autocam. But yeah, Siki's the one going for the... Or in the middle. Oh no, he's Siki's on the left. He gets the boost, and now where is he? Yeah, Siki just like ran away, and Pashi's not there either. Like, sure, Mystic shouldn't hit this ball so badly, but it shouldn't be a wide open net. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, you die. I remember that. All tied up here at DFH. Kickoff decently neutral. Gonna go more on flip side's favor. Oh, feels backflip from Siki. That backflip might have actually been good. I don't think he was doing anything useful if he did hit the ball there. And what is what is this? What is this defending? Like, how does this run through? So Cux cuts in front of Marky instead of letting him uh, just come in for the ball from behind. And where on earth is Mike? I'm gonna keep putting this back to see what on earth. So Mike's up in their half, in their goal. Okay, so Mike should just be going straight down the middle of the pitch right here. Looks like he's gone down the side of the pitch, so he's late. Like, if Mike just went straight down the middle of the pitch there, he might have made it back in time, but also Cux cutting in front of Marky here is really bad. Like, Cux should just get out the way there, because he's making the best case scenario for Cux is that he's hitting the ball sideways. Cux just, he just cut in front of Marky instead of letting Marky come in. The problem is, though, is there's already too many goals. They need to minimize as many saves and just keep, as Gibb says, shots to a minimum. You don't want I feel like Mike should have rotated down the middle, though. Just pick up all the mid-boost pads. You can get, like, 70 boosts if you just go all the way down the middle of the pitch back at your own net. Well, I mean, Cox not using comms wouldn't have been an issue there, because Marky could have called him off it, but it's probably just a lack of trust. Like, Marky says, I've got it, and Cox doesn't listen. Or Marky didn't call it, I don't know, because I don't have the comms. That's a good pass by uh, Cox. Not a bad hit by Mike either. Or as well, rather. And yeah, even with that comes, Cuck should know not to cut in front of a teammate. So Marky drives forward out the net here for no reason. Like, he should just chill out in deep in the net instead of driving onto the front post and then making a U-turn and getting stuck in a weird position. Like, Marky just, he would have driven forward there, you didn't see it on the camera, but the only reason that he would be backwards is that he's driven out and then turned and gone back to the net instead of just waiting patiently in a better position and actually being able to face the ball and attack it proactively. How's the volume, by the way? Is the volume of the casters good for you guys? It's not distracting when I speak over them. That hit from Mike would have been far better placed if he hit it to the left, because he, it was naturally going clear after it rebounded. It was never in a dangerous position. But Flipside did manage to keep pressure because Marky intercepted the clear quite well, which Marky does, Marky does quite well. He tries to figure out which way the ball is getting cleared. Oh, what a finish. That's a beautiful goal. 
die for this one. That ball get popped out by Mike. Oh, well done by Mike to intercept that. Siki kind of getting outplayed by hitting that ball straight at um uh, at Mike, and then nobody like why was Marky uncontested there? Somebody should have been ready to meet Marky when he went for that ball, but great finish by Marky regardless. Just getting it right in the top corner. Okay, so I'm assuming that the sound is quite good. It's fine, volume is good, all fine. Okay, good. It's another good interception on the wall by Mike, but every clear going up there from Maki um, Yu is kind of leading them into that awkward position. And it just, you know, they're they're just getting pressured con continually here because they keep clearing the ball in the same angle. Reading that very well. Doesn't matter though when you have an offensive rotation coming in to pound that in. Yeah, it's super predictable. Just clearing the ball in the same direction. So flip side, just refusing to let the ball go clear. It's not the best hit forward by Cox. Not much power on that one. Also very central, so the ball just comes straight back into flip side's half and now they're being pressured because of Cux's soft clear. Oh, and Mike just got beaten to the ball right there. What a save. Like Mike is always losing that race when he comes out of, or off the line to meet the ball which is already moving away from him. So it's, it's difficult for him to get the block. That was close. That's a really good hit by Mike. So dangerous. And why is nobody there for flip side like earlier? Like they're calling it style, but no, Marky doing that wasn't really style. Like he was trying to get a favorable angle to front flip into the ball. Also, by spinning around like that, it kind of confuses the defenders because they don't know what he's doing. Well played by Marky. Yeah, but like I was saying, like Mike did a great pop over the goal, like before this, uh, like a, maybe 20 seconds ago, and nobody was on the right-hand side of the pitch for flip side, or at least we can assume that because nobody met the ball after Siki whiffed it. Uh, and flip side, they're kind of. They kind of do that sometimes, where they all just, they're all on the same side of the pitch and attack, instead of spreading out. Well done by Mike and Marky to coordinate that clear. Like Mike appeared after getting demoed, called Marky off the ball. Again, Marky leaving Cox to come in and hit that, that's really good. Cox is so close there, why is Cox so close? He's never winning a race to the ball, because he has no momentum. Just hanging back a little bit means he can approach the ball with more speed when it does, you know, go higher over the net or to the side. Mike's doing really well intercepting the ball here on the wall, because Maki Yu, they keep doing this, they keep clearing it up on the wall. That time nobody was there to clear it. Oh, dear, and Cux is panicked as well, yeah. What is that? What is that? What on earth? <laughs> so I've just been praising Marky for leaving the ball to roll past him when he doesn't have a good hit, and then he goes for the stupidest redirect ever, almost on goals it, then Cux panics with 12 seconds left on the clock, and passes it to Pashi. Unbelievable. What a throw. Yeah, again, Mike, really nice interception on the wall. He's been doing that all game. But for goodness sake, flip side, this was such an easy win. Mar Mar Marky just had to not hit that ball, or Cux had to not panic. And they both did it wrong. That is a fantastic set by Pashi. Really good hit. Like this is this is really bad by Cux. It would, it would be better if he would just leave that for Mike. But Pashi hitting that curve on the roof, or where the roof meets the wall, is so difficult to defend. So incredible uh, accuracy by Pashi to get that up into the ceiling. Flip side through though, they had the win. They absolutely had the win. 
We talked about early, we talked about that's going to be like hard to come back from because they know they'll know in comms that they had that win. They're going to be really frustrated with each other. So Flipside has their work cut out for them in this series. But the issue is, is this is just the first game. Mm. Are they going to bring their A game continuously through the rest of this series? That's going to be the big difference between these two teams. Is if they I don't think either team really brought their A game, to be honest. I appreciate the casters trying to hype it up, hype up the situation because that's what they're supposed to do. So good job by them to, you know, make the event and the teams uh, in as good a light as possible. Or show them in as good a light. The flip side. Well, I mean, Mockets clears were getting constantly. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? What is going on? <laughs> Excuse me? Hold on. But as I was saying, Flipside, in the first game, they had a really easy job keeping the ball in Mockets half for a large portion of the game. And Mockett were struggling to clear it because they kept doing really predictable clears and Mike was just intercepting everything. Uh, the only times that they did get the ball, or a few times that they did get the ball clear was just where Flipside didn't spread out enough in attack. So Flipside... Good job for the most part intercepting clears and like just working out which way Mocket are going to clear the ball before it happens. But then Flipside's defending was so bad. It was just it was just really bad. Like they kept on just passing the ball straight to for people to shoot. And I need to see this again. So Mike with the backflip. Cucks off the line and he's like, well, <laughs> I guess I'll not own goal this. <laughs> and then Pashu just with the touch. Unbelievable. What? So it looks like Cux just got beaten to the ball because Mystic's faster in the air. Cux usually does the double jump into lean back aerial and Mystic, you know, he does the fast aerial where he jumps leaning back and then lets go of his joystick and jumps a second time, boosting the entire time. So Cux gets beaten in the air sometimes, even though he's quick to go up with no hesitation. He's just slow once he does go up. I mean, Flipside are going to feel pretty sad about that one because it was just a 50-50, but they really they could have dealt with it a little bit better. The 50-50 by Cux wasn't particularly good. He didn't force his car through the ball. He kind of flipped away from it. That is a good clear by Pashi. What is going on? <laughs> Excuse me? How did this work? Oh, it's just because I think Siki made a really, really bad challenge. Like, Siki was never winning the race to that ball. He should have just chilled out. Just bad depth perception by Siki right there. I'm not sure what I think of Marky's new car colors, the green and white. I don't know what he's trying to do there. Mike a bit slow into the air right there. Oh, what pass. No, Cucks, why? Why? Ruined. Absolutely ruined that pass from Mike. That's really smart play by Pashi. If he's able to read that, that could spell big trouble for this flip side team. Luckily for them, they're able to Mike should have controlled that ball instead of just hitting it straight into Pashi. <laughs> what? <laughs> Mike jumping past the ball that he somehow recovers in time. And sometimes I feel like Marky goes for the goal too much. Like he should have realized he was not going to score based on his angle and his speed and the way that the ball was positioning itself and he should have just tried to set the pass for someone instead of going for the shot yeah Cux is kind of not doing anything here he just leaves the net and then he's in no man's land it's not very good play by Cux it's like Cux just followed Marky into the corner and he was like sup oh wait I'm not winning this ball I guess I'll just chill Oh, well played. Wow. Absolutely wrecked. 
1v3 by Pashi. Pashi that's, no potential to knock it back out. that's ridiculous. For Marky there, he's got to hit the ball, and again, what is Cux doing? Marky's just got to hit the ball here. Like, ignore Pashi, just hit the ball. Cux, again. Like, both Marky and Cux are going for the same block, and Pashi just fakes them both at the same time. Mike is muting on and off. My mic? It shouldn't be. I'll keep an eye on it. It's well done by Pashi. Popping that for Mystic. It's well played by Marky, but uh, Mystic, really good positioning. He hung out behind. I didn't see if it was Pashi or Siki. He realized that Marky had the potential to flick the ball past Siki. He could have got dunked on. I feel like he should have just hit it to the side. And uh, he positioned himself so that when Marky did flick it past his teammate, he would be first on the scene. Oh dear, Flipside are just getting pressure, they can't get rid of it. Don't, don't soft clear, don't do it. Okay, well done. Marky just dribbling the ball out of defense, systematically removing opponents from the game. Mike should have scored. Oh dear, okay. Marky hitting that center is a bit risky. He could have got dunked on. I feel like he should have just hit it to the side. Wait for the bounce to smash it. Well done. Wait for the bounce and smash it. Uh, okay. Kind of. That's good by Mike to go and get that mid boost because they are getting pressured right here. And when you're getting pressured, you kind of get boost starved. So Mike's stealing that mid boost. Really, really good play because it relieves the pressure on his. Well, it just it makes more boost available at the back for his teammates to take. Because if he takes a back boost instead of a mid boost right there, and then Cux maybe or Mike or Marky comes out for a challenge and looks for the mid boost, it's already gone because Mike would have taken it. So you've got to take mid boost sometimes, even when you're defending. Well, what? 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 What is happening? I'm so confused. What? So Mike bails on the shot, and then all the market players are sitting in front of the ball, and they're like, "Hey, that's a pretty ball." Did Mike think he was going wide or something? <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. And they just both went. All hits that backboard. He then hits it with it, and gets a huge. Wait, what? Why? Like, you could forgive Flipside for being aggressive here and moving up, because they've got a minute left, they need two goals, so they've got to be aggressive. I'm alright with Marky going for that risky aerial, but Mike, wait a minute, what? He should know that's not going in. He sh if anyone knows that's not going in, it's Mike. What is happening? Are they going to get a... Okay. I'm so confused. Yeah. I, I'm confused as well. This is ridiculous. One minute remaining. Two goals needed on the side of flip side. Cooks are so that's fine by Marky. You've got to take a risk. Like, look where Mike is. He should know exactly where that ball is going. And he should position himself to get ready for the rebound. And then he's just like, nah. <laughs> and then Mystic gets... He gets completely done by the bounce. He just goes too close to the ball. Like, Mystic there, he just needs to hang back a little bit more. And then he can easily get it. Oh <laughs> Then Pashi somehow doesn't score the open net. Mike kind of bails. <laughs> that's oh, that's that Siki comes in. What is happening? Are they gonna get a br okay? I'm so confused. That would have been so funny if Flipside scored the counter attack from that. It would have been like genius by Mike. <laughs> what happened? Baiting the entire enemy team in for the open net. But they didn't score the counter, so rip. Oh, what a pass. Oh, that like first touch was glorious, by the way. I saw this live. Or this is one goal that I did see live. Look at this touch. Beautiful. Completely, completely beautiful. Really tough stuff to yeah. defend. Words, man. Words. 98 kilometers per hour up into the top of the goal. So quick you would have to be to get up and into that one. You know, credit to Cux as well for just draining that shot high in the net. And more importantly, being in the right position anyway. Oh, Mike doing his best 
Lucinio impression. Bang! Oh, no. Never mind. Bang! What a clear. Okay. It's kind of, yeah. Mystic failing to get the ball down on the ground. Okay, well done by Pashi. Pashi getting above the above the ball. Oh dear! What a quiet game for Flipside. Like Marky and Mike, really, apart from Marky's assist, not doing anything up front. Mike defended quite well for most of the game, but that was pretty poor. Kuxin of the Batmobile, that was the problem. Maybe. Kux is having a bit of a, an identity crisis. He can't decide what card he wants to play. Especially. What's with especially? Why do people say especially? Is that how Americans say especially? I don't know. I played League. Oh, well, I know X Special is the League player, but come on. Is that really why people say especially? That's a big misplay by Cux to leave the net here. When Cux does this, he should be... He should be, like, ready. Uh, maybe he just couldn't recover in time, in all fairness. I want to see where Mike is here. We need to go back a little bit further. Oh, here we go. So Mike, I imagine, is on the kickoff. Yeah, we have Mike. Even if Mike just turns around right now and starts flipping back at his own goal, he can make it back in time for that. He's nowhere to be seen. I don't know where Mike is. Like, okay, there he is. It's not a terrible clear by Mystic. If Flipside know that Mike isn't going to be there, then Marky has to defend the net in that position as best as he can. Because Cux is not going to be able to. That's a good demo. Relief pressure. So Americans really say X specially. Really? Why? There's no X in especially. It's just an E, then special. Then another E. E specially. I don't like Marky going on the wall there. It just confuses Cox a little bit. Like having two players from the same team on the wall at once is a bit, a bit weird. Oh, I don't know. This is so weird. Mike has been up front for ages. He's just chilling in the box. He's probably still okay. Now he's out. Yeah, now he's rotating. Siki, it is Siki. I think he got it right the first time. Siki, Siki Sam. Well, that's a horrendous clear by Cux. Oh, the delayed flip by Mystic right there was really nice. That's a great hit by Mike. I don't know where Cux was. Cux should have been there for that hit, not Marky. Cux should have already moved over onto the right-hand side of the pitch there. <laughs> what a touch. <laughs> well done. That ball is lofted very well right now. If anyone can get up and into that, Cookser goes for it. But Siki getting the block, able to keep that one out of goal. Mike rules now. Back on defense, gonna push this one up into the air. Marky Dudog. That's well done by Flipside. Very good defending. Players. Just well passing the ball out of defense. Siki. Very important. Interference. Find his teammates time. Well done. Siki is definitely What? In the way. And that's something that's How did that work? I thought Mike was gonna do absolutely nothing there. Then Siki hit the ball straight into Mike. 
irritating, you know, every what was that ball, from Marky? Right, okay, it, it worked, but it. It's gotta be frustrating. it looked a bit weird. And that doesn't seem to be deterring them, but you can definitely notice it in the fact that And Cox and Marky game. getting in the way a bit. Yeah, it's a little bit chaotic and disorganized by Flipside. They're just not hitting the ball in the right places. Like they're never getting the ball high over Muckett's net, and whenever they do, somebody's already there on the wall to meet it. There we go. See, as soon as they get the ball high over the net, just to get a goal instantly. Mike was actually the last guy back there. And the fact that he was able to sweep in and get another touch on it is what led to that goal. Well, did you see Cookser? Cookser took Mystic and just shoved him out of goal. Just pushed him into the corner. Play. I don't know what happened in the last game well of Freedom Girls against now. Flipside. I don't know what that was about. Anyone's game at this point. Marky coming up from the backfield trying to push that one up. Nice shot from Cookser going to go off the back wall. Pashy getting up and into touching it. Really good stuff. I like how Maka is always up on that. I want to see more teams Maka utilizing the curvy part of the wall back where it meets the ceiling. Just slamming it straight down off there but when you have a player up on the back wall and they're able to like just get any sort of touch on it it completely changes the trajectory and blows the setup yeah you see some of these shots going oh, oh, my oh. Wow. okay i looked away for like a split second and marky scored take the lead here this is one of the first leads they've held what a play by mystic <laughs> great pass great pass by mystic to marky the countryman linking up beautifully Effort got 5 0 three times. It's not that surprising. It's not that surprising. They're by far the weakest team in this uh, tournament, or this group, in my opinion. What a play by Mike. Oh my word. What is that? That is awful. Why are you hitting that ball, Mystic? Just a little wide like there's wide nobody wide pressuring and he's like he's like all right i better slam this right into the corner center it perfectly for flip sides come in for the shot it's just unbelievable there's no pressure at all and he's like panic <laughs> quick hit it <laughs> hit it anywhere oh my that's a good effort great great offense forcing great defensive plays that's the thing. It's hard to have good defense unless a good offense is coming at you. That's where we can show the respect out of these two teams. And they're definitely doing that. They're showing some patience, but they're not being afraid. And that's what's making these teams so good is the hesitation is almost non-existent. They're making plays with intent, and that's what you need to see out of top plays and top tier That's really good by Marky and Cux. But look, every time they're doing this, they're hitting it straight to the player on the wall. Who's just ready to, to meet it. Excuse me. If you see if you see an opponent on the wall, you should try and hit it down off the wall onto the ground because that player on the wall just looks silly. Surely this is a done deal. Surely. Surely. Okay. There we go. Yeah, really smart play there, just spiking it down. Don't take any risk with it, especially what we see capability. In the air with the Mystics defending in this game was so bad, but it, he did score the only goal, although it was kind of just a pinch goal or a pinch pass. Supersonic Avengers should have been here instead of effort thoughts. Well, absolutely not. Supersonic Avengers failed to qualify and effort succeeded in qualifying, so the teams that are here in the groups are the ones who should be here and they all deserve their spot. That doesn't change the fact that effort are the weakest team. Like they, they have to make upsets happen and they were not capable of doing so today. They were not capable of doing so. They just didn't play aggressive enough. You've got to take the game to these good teams. You've got to just play aggressive, get in their faces. You can't let them play their game. Like, I'm surprised Effort weren't able to win more than 2 out of 20 games. That's, that's shockingly low. Even given the series that they had, I would have expected them to be able to win at least... at least 5, five games out of 20. Mystic was ama amazing. He was very quick to the ball and attack, which is great. But defensively, he... Oh, well, that was a good save. Defensively, he was making some very, very questionable decisions in the last game. 
these teams and now market is looking to push it over into the flip side territory cooks are Cooks's right. camera is still zoomed out touch. compared to what it used to be if you can just get the oh, angle correct shot. mike Marky Duda, excuse me, able to get the block. Shot was not quite on line, but my goodness, this aggression, you know they got to be feeling the heat. God, these guys are coming out quick, and that's what you want to see. If they can keep mm. this pressure up, they're going to put themselves in a very good position. But the fact that Flipside is answering with their own tactics, sorry, you guys, that was terrible. You can't say that SA deserve to be here. They don't. They lost. They failed to qualify, so they don't deserve to be here. What was... That looks weird. And speaking of pointless aerials... So I was doing, doing a lot of discussion about pointless areas yesterday. Oh, okay. What's up, Dogu? So, I don't know why this net's wide open. Mike's just like, thank you very much. Um, I'll take that. Gladly. He'll gladly accept that one gold donation. You looking to get into shoutcasting, Johnny? Yeah, sure. Uh, definitely. I'm taking, taking opportunities when they come been casting for Rocket Royale. What a shot, by the way. Oh Holy... Okay, it was Pashi with the save. I thought Mike might save that. That was a great well shot by Cux. Marky's first touch there was very bad, just too heavy. I missed what the casters were talking about there. I'm not sure what that discussion or how it started. What a terrible hit by Cux. Like... He's had a few of those where he just mishits it. See that hit by Mike? If he manages to hit it a little bit higher and hit the curved part of the of the wall where it meets the ceiling, then the ball will fall straight down over the net. I don't know why he doesn't aim higher. Maybe he was, but that's a nice demo. Okay, Marky not able to recover in time. Oh dear, what is this? 1v1 setting that up initially with a 1v1 you generally want to have the ability to beat one person yeah the fact that he was able to beat two force a clear and then get that's that true right bias towards f3 uh i wouldn't say i'm biased towards f3 i predicted that they would win but i, but I was wrong that's not really being biased good follow up by cux good response coming in early on that one it's a great again, initial very, hit, very also. Well Although, um, I think it was Mystic should have had that. If it wasn't Mystic, then I apologize. It. But whoever went for that save should have had it. They just flew underneath the ball. But no, when I'm doing analysis, I have no bias whatsoever. I say exactly what I think is going to happen. I try not to be influenced by who I think is, like, my friend or whatever. Or I always try and make predictions based on what my brain thinks rather than my heart. Definitely bias? What do you mean? Like, sure, I want Flipside to win, but that doesn't change, like, any of my predictions or my criticism towards them. Well played by Mystic. Like, Cux, Cux and Mike should know that this is not going to be an attackable ball. Mystic is clearing that, like, most of the time. So the fact that Mike is going up in the air, combined with Cux being so far up the pitch, is just really, really poor play by Flipside. They should know that the clear ball is happening most of the time from Mystic, because he's very capable off the wall. Even when casting for RLCS, well, give me an example. I've never casted for RLCS, what are you on about? <laughs> Isn't wanting them to win being biased? Well, no, not at all. What have, have I ever said like something like, Oh yeah, look at Flipside, they're amazing. They're the best team. This is why they're the best team. I don't think I've ever said that. Okay, that was a laggy hit, but it worked. Of course, the players don't see that lag. It's just on server side because of the... Um, West Coast Spectator. Like, I'm talking more about Flipside because there's more to talk about from Flipside's perspective. Mocket are just playing their game. They're just doing what they do, so there's not a lot to talk about. 
they're just sitting back, they're counter-attacking very, very well, they're getting up in the air quickly, they're doing a good job challenging the ball, and flip side are mispositioning a lot. So I'm going to talk about the mistakes that happen. So I usually end up talking about the team that's losing more. If uh, flip side were winning, then I'd probably be talking a lot more about Maki Yu right here. And I did. If you notice, in the game that Flipside won, I talked about Mystic a lot and his defensive mistakes. But uh, that being said, Mystic has played really well in attack this series. Very, very good positioning. Good read on where the ball is going to land. <laughs> I do, th I do actually, I do think Flipside is probably the best team. Today they were not the best team. Today they were not the best team. Oh dear. Somehow makes its way back onto the blue. And Mystic's able to push it all the way back onto the wall. Nice team kind of passing there. Final 30 seconds. What do you what, what does Flipside need to do right now? They need to have a pass play get set up. They're taking too much time just putting the ball at the net. The rotations are there to keep the pressure up, but they don't have the Yeah, I agree. Products cool. underscore twenty. Exactly. That shot from Cux probably would have been better if he just missed the net because he fired it straight at the goalkeeper for the easy clear. Down here, great clear coming out from Siki, just pushing that one all the way over. And if they can get this ball just to touch, that'll be the end. Yes, yeah, as far as I understand, being biased is when you make excuses for one team and say that the other team got lucky, things like that. And that's gonna be get. Oh, it's still in the air. Uh, it's probably game. Oh, a chance now for flip side. Oh, it's uh, cleared. It's probably gonna be game. Oh, it's back in the middle. <laughs> it, you always want to call the end of the game before it actually happens if you're casting. Now's the time to do it. These games are supposed to be very, very close, and whoever comes out on top of this is going to give themselves a good opportunity when it comes to the standings at the end. Is there any truth to the whole We Dim Girls macro situation? Who you always want to call the end of the game before it actually happens if you're casting. That they're still in this, and that's what you want to see. If these guys are going to come back in and do this kind of stuff, now's the time to do it. These games are supposed to be very, very close, and whoever comes out on top of this is going to give themselves a good opportunity when it comes to the standings at the end. Is there any truth to the whole We Dim Girls macro situation? Who knows, dude? I don't know. Side. Still going to be able to redeem themselves. Pull this back to a 3 2 with a win here in Utopia. Mike Rule is driving this one up into the corner. Gonna push this one around. Oh, what a nice pass. Time. Holy oh, cow, goodness. what a finish. Soft, but it was accurate. And that's all that Mike's passing is probably the best in the world. So He's just got a really uncanny ability of knowing where people are. Was that, in fact, that might have been a bump on Mike to make that pass happen, but it's what he was going for anyway, so well played. Absolutely, that upper 90, the ideal, the kind of the sweet spot in the goal. Putting it right there. Flip side is up, and here comes the counter play from Pashi. Going Nobody was saving that one. Able to push Nobody was saving away. that one. That, man, what a pinch there from, from Cookser. This ball is locked. All right, well, XX, AERF. I appreciate the criticism. Uh, I'll try not to be biased at all. I was already trying not to be. Maybe I am a little bit, but I'm not aware of that. And I definitely don't try to be biased. That's a nice block by Marky. Great interference coming out for Seeking Bind his teammates. Time to get back on defense. Yeah, Pash actually had a really good follow up on so that. So Cox had a good read on that. He that because he got up air, way before Mystic. Mystic may be a little bit hesitant. Oh, oh. Man, oh my pressure. god, another one. So close. No, Mystic's up. Oh, here comes the follow up from Cox. They're still off the back. What's up, Marcus? How you doing? Spent like 10 seconds in the box. It doesn't matter though if you don't put it in. No, it doesn't. They had, one, they had one back rotating trying to get some boost. Control it. I mean, if you have those two people, well done. Boost and being okay, able to kind of. <laughs> consolidate and you know relook at what's about to happen. I want to see teams controlling the ball in their own corner in defense. Oh, what a whiff! I don't know who that was. I didn't get a chance. I think it was Mike. Somebody whiffed a wall clear really badly. That's a good clear. Just like any other hit on, in Rocket League, you want to wait for the ball to bounce off a surface and then hit it because you get more distance on it. That's what I was talking about earlier, though. They put it in some very dangerous positions on this Maka team. Yes. But they always have a teammate to follow it up. They always have a teammate that's there to to cover that position. And I don't know well, I'd be lying if I said I didn't want Flipside to win here. Like, I'm very good friends with Marky in real life, so I wanted him to win. But uh, I'm not going to make excuses for them. Maka outplayed them this series. They were far more consistent in their defending. 
and they did a great job like just pressuring Flipside, getting the ball past Flipside to create chances. They broke down the Flipside rotation very well today from what I've seen. Yeah, thanks, I appreciate it, dude. Any, any criticism I appreciate. Uh, I'm still gonna... I'm still gonna defend my honor if somebody says that I'm being biased, though. Because, I don't know. Tell me what I said that was biased, then I'll... I'll understand. <laughs> what? <laughs> what a beautiful finish by Siki. Oh, what a mistake by Kux. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so Siki right there, he's just too far off the line before jumping into the air, so he hits it the wrong way. Pashi always makes flipside tilt. Pashi's got a reasonable record against flipside. I mean, having a decent record against Flipside is good because they're, they've been so dominant. So that's a good job by Marky, being patient initially, then taking one player out with his hard clear. Out of the game, that is. Oh, well played. It's good positioning by Mike. This is how you spread yourself out in attack. You have one person on the left, uh, like, preemptively, so that when the ball does go fast across the goal, you can be there before anybody else even sees you. But yeah, Siki and Mystic and Pashi are an, are an excellent, excellent team. They're very, very good. Oh, what a play. Like, Mystic's rebounding and his aerial accuracy is probably the best at, out of anyone in this lobby, even surpassing that of Kuxer. And Pashi's a great goalkeeper. He's actually underrated in that regard. Like, no, but you, people always talk about Cux and Scrub Killer as great goalies, but Pashi is a fantastic, fantastic goalkeeper as well. Flipside 3 2 over RG Esports. It's not that surprising. I said before, this game's. Oh, cheeky. I said earlier that I wouldn't be surprised if RG took one or two games, so that's probably as expected. Especially with how Flipside have been playing today, 3-2 is probably the expected scoreline in their favor. Objectively, would Mok have done better if it was Scrub instead of Mystic? Um, I think Scrub brings more to the pitch than Mystic does because of his defensive capabilities. Mystic brings a lot to attack though. And as long as Pashi doesn't get too aggressive and greedy with the ball and with boost, Mystic can perform very, very well. Pashi was a little bit too close there. Like, he moved in too close to the ball. He wanted to get there first, and he just moved in too close. The ball went over his head. It happens a lot these days. People want to, they're so eager to get first, or they're so eager to get to the ball first that they creep forward a little bit too close, and the ball goes over their head, and they're like, whoops. Should have stayed a little bit further back. As well as it kind of expresses how close these games were, but not to the extent of what we saw. These games being way closer than Yeah, I'll do, uh, if you have any questions or comments about this match, then now is a good time to make them before I move on to the next series. But Mock it 3, Flipside 2. Not what I, th what, what I expected. I predicted Flipside to win 4-1. I thought they were going to come in with fire to this game and take it to Mock it, but they were not very organized. They started off very badly as well. They should have won the first game. Just a horrendous defensive mishap involving Marky and then Cux. Like Marky redirecting the ball past Cux, nearly own goaling it. Cux recovering in time, but then panicking and clearing the ball straight towards Pashi, who scored the equalizer with 12 seconds left. Like... That's just not very good play by Marky and Cox in game one. Scott have to say over on the desk. Scott, back to you. Do I feel like Flipside has lost its number one dominance? I don't think Flipside will be as dominant as they were. Like in the beginning, they won everything without even trying. They just won everything without even trying. So they're not they're not going to get that level again. I don't think with that exact three players, we could see a team rise to that level of dominance in the future in Rocket League, but I don't think it'll be the combination of Marky, Mike, and Cux. They can still be the best, but not like the best by an absolute mile without even practicing or trying. Uh, Vodkam, I appreciate that dude. It's very kind of you. 
Did I know Marky in real life before Rocket League? No, I didn't. We actually met uh, through Rocket League. I remember I was just watching a... I felt personally that F3... I was watching a Twitch VOD from Cronovi's channel, because when I started playing Rocket League, I wanted to find good players. Find Cronovi, obviously, because he's the most popular player. And I saw a video of Marky Duda versus Cronovi 1v1, and I heard that Marky Duda, was, Marky Duda was Scottish, and I was like, nice, I'm Scottish as well. That's pretty cool to see someone from my country uh, beating Cronovi in a 1v1, because way back, like, Cronovi was regarded as the best player, or one of, if not one of the best, or one of the best, if not the best, I should say. Uh, so that's how I heard about Marky. Then I went and found his Twitch stream and I said hello and we found out that we lived like two minutes away from each other in the same city. So we were like, wow, okay. And we met up a few times. I probably met him like 10 or 12 times by now in real life. We're pretty good friends. Marky is Johnny's version of Sweetie GG. Yeah, you could say so. This... That was hilarious, by the way. Flipside, then Mike coming in and bumping cucks just to finish it off. <laughs> It's beautiful. Greasy is the fastest improving player. Other uh, thoughts? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think he's the fastest improving player. I think the fastest improving player would be like someone who's just coming onto the scene like recently. Like it would have to be someone from RG. They've suddenly gotten so good, and I would say Reganum has really impressed me. Although six and their, their entire team's impressed me. Their teamwork is exceptional. But Reganum of RG, really, really good player. He's been good for a long time, actually. Dogu as well. I see him hanging out in chat. Very impressive player. I know that you're not too happy with your results today, but uh, very, very impressive play. Great ability to strike the ball accurately. I think it's just a little bit of defensive blundering at the beginning of the matches. But yeah.